Girls, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Rai and this is Rai's Reading Corner and I am bringing you a new reading vlog for the Gilmore's Girls Readathon that takes place from November 15th to November 22nd. So super excited about this readathon. Um, Gilmore Girls is life. I love it. So I knew I had to participate in this readathon. Um, plans for the week. I'm going to just try and get the reading done, obviously, because again, I've been haven't really read since August. I did finish my first book since August last night, but it has nothing to do with this readathon. But I was pretty proud of myself, so I give myself a little, little props for that one. But um, I did post my TBR video, which I'll put in the cards above. Um, I am doing the bingo board, which I'll put the picture here. This is kind of the one I'm going for. Um, I have double dipped on one of the prompts. Um, I have three books in total. I'm going to try to attempt to stick to this TBR, not switch, but I'm already like kind of feeling like I'm going to switch but we'll see so definitely getting a later start in reading today we decided to flip our Christmas decorations instead just we needed some lifting spirit <laughs> of some Christmas decorations so that definitely took priority today but now I'm like in the mood to read like a Christmassy themed book but I don't have any and I'm trying not to do much reading on my computer because a lot of my students, I'm a teacher, um, are virtual and I spend a lot of time on the computer. So I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying not to be on the computer or electronics. So I don't know. But beside that, my prompt that I'm working on is a cover, a book with uh, flowers on the cover, as well as a book that takes place in New England. And the book that I have currently... <laughs> that we working on which is definitely opposite from kind of the mood that I'm in for reading right now and that is um Horrid by Katrina Leno definitely has the flowers and um it's about a girl who I guess her father dies they were in California um but I think sounds like she's originally from New England area um which is like where um Gilmore Girls takes place and she moves back there after her father's death um and it also takes place in autumn which was one of the other prompts from the other seven prompts so I kind of double dipped on that which is kind of cool um I guess this is like a spooky type story it's not super long it's like a I think it's 322 pages so super reasonable to get done um but just like I said I'm not really in this mood currently um like I want something more of a holiday themed. So I don't know. I'm going to try this. Like I said, I really don't want to read on my Kindle or on my phone just because I'm tired of being looking at the screen. But I'll keep you updated. So I'm going to read today. Um, I'm going to my parents' house. Their, um, the football game tonight is playing against, or this afternoon is against my family's team versus my husband's team. So we're having like a little party together, um, which will be fun. That's the only people that we really see, so it's kind of nice to get out of the house. And yeah, so I'll keep you updated throughout the day. Um, like yeah, so this is what I'm gonna attempt to start first. Like I said, it might change, but we'll see. Hi loves. So I figured I'd do a check-in because I just got done filming a fairy loot unboxing, and they had like these worms this time. They're like more like not even like the worms, but like it's literally all over me, and it's awful, and I hate it right now. That's my whole bedroom's filled with this so it's terrible so update um in typical rye fashion I have redone my TBR list because like I said earlier I just wasn't in the mood for horror type things and because I've been in that reading rut type thing I don't want to get myself there if I'm feeling good and not sick um I want to read something that I'm super super interested in so like I said I was feeling the holiday themes um, for Christmas, I was asking for the physical book of holidays, um, just because I felt like I would really like it, but I couldn't wait. So I did the ebook of it, which I know I said I'm trying not to do, um, but if I hold it really like it, I definitely will still want to get a physical copy of it. Um, and I'm going to count it for a prompt for kind of one of those seven ones where it's a story that takes place in the fall or winter and it takes place at Christmas time so it's definitely winter but it also definitely could count for a small town which is the bingo board um because it takes place mostly like in a cabin um in Utah um and it's not like it's completely isolated like these were that did reference neighbors but it's definitely a small town feel so I definitely could use this for both of them so that's why I was like okay with switching um, I don't know where that will now lead me with what other books I'm going to read, but we're just going to go with it. So, so far it is, um, we have our main character. She and her family have been going to this cabin with her parents, like best friends for years um, to celebrate Christmas, like a whole entire week actually. And um, 
when they're there she has had this crush on one of these boys for a really long time but in a drunken state her and the younger brother end up kissing um and she's so embarrassed um because the brother look at look at i feel like a dog right now I'm like squirrel i thought i saw one of those things on me i'm telling you they're everywhere um <laughs> And the brother that she really likes actually had seen them kissing. Um, so she's absolutely mortified. And they got bad news at the end that the people that actually own the cabin are selling it. So this would be like their last Christmas altogether in this particular cabin. Um, so she's really sad. They're leaving to go back home to California and they're hit by a car. And then all of a sudden she knows she's back on the plane and it's back to December 20th. So I'm, I like the, like stories like that. Like I think it's kind of cool. Um, it kind of is like, you know, I don't know if you guys ever seen that 12 days or 12 days of Christmas or 12 dates of Christmas on like Freeform where like she keeps having like deja vu and it's like the boy and that's what I'm kind of feeling right now. And it's just kind of giving me all the feels that I needed. Like I said, we put up our Christmas decorations and I wanted that warmth and coziness, which I feel like goes so much more with Gilmore Girls than like a spooky, scary story. So I'm really happy with the choice. Um, I am reading it on my Kindle, which I really wish I wasn't, but I am. So I'm probably like 15% into it. So not too far um we were at my like i said my parents house but i will be reading more tonight and getting cozy and re-watching the beginning of gilmore girls because i just actually had finished watching the series once again for the i don't even know how many times i've watched it and i'll be re-watching it again so i don't know if i'll check in tonight but i'll probably check in with you maybe at work tomorrow which is not the most exciting place but we'll see <laughs> Um, it is Tuesday and I'm obviously at work in the classroom. Um, I have no in-person kids today, so I sit on the computer all day long, which is really, really long. So um, I wanted to give you a quick update. Um, I did read more last night and the holidays and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so now she's, I think it's her third time that she's now going through the events and she's trying to figure out like what she needs to do obviously for this day to stop repeating and we're seeing a little bit of a romance now going on um you know our male character is a little reluctant he's like you know i don't want to ruin like we're like family but like he's definitely is very flirtatious and says things that like contradicts that so that's really exciting um i like the character development in here um so yeah i really am enjoying it it's perfect read for what i need something light and just kind of fun and cute and perfect for the holidays. So I'm super excited about that. Obviously in typical Rory fashion, I brought my book with me to work today. Um, I'm gonna read on my lunch. I have an hour unless kids need my help. There's a time like when I can get out and help kids on the computer, but mostly they're signed off by this time. So yeah, so I'm gonna read during lunch. I'll kind of update you, I'm starving. <laughs> and then I don't really know what else is going on today. I have a meeting later, but it's pretty, pretty blah day. The weather's kind of blah. Not that exciting for a video. So I'll continue reading and I will update you on how I like it so far. So bye. <laughs> got up 70% and um my lunch break's almost over I don't have teach rest of the day um but I have obviously a lot of work to another meeting but we did finally get some steaminess um between the two characters that get together but because I, I don't want to say who those two characters are but it was good and I loved it and it was so cute um so yeah so I realized I haven't even said the main character's name um May is what her what she goes by um, May is the one that's like having like the groundhog type day and keep repeating things over and over again. I'm at the point now where she's like getting frustrated because she's afraid that things are too good to be true and that all of a sudden things going to happen and she's going to go back to that day one again and lose all of this happiness that she has and that's all that 
she had kind of been asking for like before this happened was to have the universe show her what makes her happy and she's afraid now that she's gonna lose that and um, so she doesn't like want to be too happy because she's like it's gonna just be gone eventually so uh, I just and then Andrew in this book I love Andrew he's such a good guy like, I feel like he's the guy that just would do anything for his girl and I just it's warming up my heart um also if you've read this book you know what I'm talking about if you haven't read this book, I'm sure you'll fall in love with this character, Benny. Benny. I don't sound like I said Benny. Benny. I love him. I think he's a great side character. Um, and I love it. I love when you have a side character that you feel really like rooting for and that you really like too. Um, not just like our main central characters. So I like that this book has a really likable side character as well. And I just, I love Benny. And if you've read this book, let me know if you have the same feelings with Benny. Did you like him too? Or were you like not crazy about him or didn't really care about him? So let me know what you thought about him too. So I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to like treat myself, like do work and then like treat myself to reading a little bit and then get back to work which is not good but I just kind of need it today so I'll check in later okay so 100% multitasked um and I finished holidays and it was everything that I needed to be I gave it five stars um it was just perfection in my eyes I think it was so cute um it wasn't like heavy on like the sexual stuff so if you don't like books like that like that's definitely okay like obviously it has the sexual tension in the book but it doesn't it's not like the whole focus of it so if you're looking for more of like a romance that has not a lot of that in there definitely this is a good book for you the ending was cute i love andrew i absolutely love him i love may too they're just so cute and again benny it just comes in for the win like i said earlier so um, it definitely is a good book. Um, even if you're not a fan of, like, the Groundhog Day trope thing where, like, you know, days repeat, um, I still would give it a chance because it's really more heavy at the beginning of the book. Um, but it's not, like, the main focus, really. Like, obviously, it's a major part of it, but I think there's a lot more to this story than just that. So I, I wouldn't give it like a definite no if that's not a trope that you don't enjoy reading about so I definitely think there's more to it than just that so that's kind of my disclaimer about it but definitely a good start definitely what I needed to get out of my reading rut that I've been in so what this counted for so out of the seven prompts this counted for takes place in winter obviously it's um the last like section of the book it takes six months or like after so it takes place in like the summer but 99% of the book takes place in winter so that definitely covered that for my bingo board um it was a definitely 100% of five star read so it counts for that also it counts for snow mention because it's winter in Utah and there's lots of snow <laughs> and definitely for contemporary fiction so I was able to knock off three things off my bingo board now I don't know where I want to go because I'm kind of in this holiday reading spirit and I saw someone talk about a book called 12 Days of Christmas or 12 Dates of Christmas um and it kind of is like contemporary fiction again too with some romance so I don't know maybe that but I also if not then I either have The Kiss Quotient um or rereading of The Red Queen but I don't know if I'm really in the fantasy mood so I'm not 100% sure kind of where direction I want to go but I definitely am starting off strong I definitely highly suggest this book I want a physical copy of this book to keep in my bookshelf because I could see myself definitely reading this book every kind of November December kind of cozy book to get ready for the holidays it's one of those books that I could definitely see myself reading again so great start five star reads um yeah I'm really excited and I don't know where I'm going but once I have a direction I'll let you know and I'll keep you updated so I'll check in tonight hi loves it's Tuesday so I didn't check in last night just because I was tired and <laughs> it just wasn't happening but as you saw I read for a little bit and I am reading a new book so I'm reading um The 12 Days of Christmas by Jenny Bayless so I did what I did not want to do which was buy a new book because I have so many unread books 
but I wanted just to go with my feeling of wanting some cute fluffy holiday reading material so I saw this one someone posted it somewhere and I it was just released recently I think in 2020 definitely I think it was in doesn't say specific month but it was 2020 so it's definitely it is a new release um and I am enjoying it so we have our main character Kate has kind of been in a rut with dating in terms of things and she decides to sign up for this uh, program through her town when she lives in a small town um and it's outside of London I believe and it's like the 12 dates of Christmas and you get matched with a different date on each time um, based off like your profile so I just finished reading through um, her fourth date and it's like so so far each chapter is like a specific like a certain date and it's cute so far um, it's funny as well um, she has a best friend named Matt who works at like coffee like bakery place um and maybe my guess is maybe that that's the one that she ends up falling in love with because at the back it says um and maybe just maybe it's been right within her reach all along when she maybe like referring to that that's who she falls in love with and not one of the 12 guys that she meets on the 12 dates I could totally be wrong but it's fun because some of the dates go well some of the dates are funny it's relatable I think it's really cute so far comparing to the holidays book I just read I find that a little bit more interesting like more captivating but I think this is still a good book and I still am enjoying it so that's progress so this can count for a couple different prompts it can count for like a small town vibe place because um tech, even though she does visit like London and stuff where she particularly lives is a small town where she grew up she moved back after she kind of did some traveling after she attended uni um it also counts for coffee uh character studies coffee she goes to the bake the coffee bakery sorry my lights just turned off in my classroom so sorry for the light change um and she does definitely drinks coffee at the coffee shop also it counts for a character that bakes because she actually bakes the um, desserts for Matt at the bakery so I definitely could count off these as a couple there might be a few more but those are the three that like stand out to me most that definitely count for this prompt so I am enjoying it I'm on page 83 so I definitely got some good reading done last night so my plan is I'm going to enjoy my lunch in a typical Rory Gilmore fashion I'm going to put headphones in I don't have uh, um, the old CD players with the big headphones like she does at lunch um and yeah so I'm gonna eat my lunch put my headphones in maybe listen to some music and get some reading done in a typical Rory Gilmore fashion so we'll see um today is we have no kids in person it's like the deep clean but they still have staff come but it's like kind of more of a relaxed day we can kind of wear whatever so it's kind of nice but um I had full intentions of checking in last night but I was just was so tired um but I did read last night even though I didn't wasn't feeling that great um and the 12 dates of Christmas so one thing that I really liked and I forgot to say it the other day that I automatically thought of a exact scene in Gilmore Girls um she's going on her first blind date and they're like well how do you know like who your blind date is like when you arrive to the place and they're like oh they give you pictures or whatever she goes you know you don't have to wear the rose or the flower on your lapel to like show like who you are like find your mate or whatever and I um, think back to the episode when Lorelai and Rory are having trouble seeing each other because Rory's so busy at Yale and Lorelai is so busy getting up the inn and up and going and they meet at the mall and they have the flowers on their lapel like on their shirt or the lapel so but that was really funny that I was able to like make that connection between Gilmore Girls which was always, is always fun um I am liking it so far however um the writing style for me is just not something that I like 
um it's just so wordy and so many adjectives it is her debut novel so maybe it's kind of that i just think this book could be shorter i tend my i find myself like skimming over some paragraphs that are just like describing the wintry scene outside which is nice maybe like the first or second time but it's december and there's a lot of snow and we get lots lots of description of things like the snow so um for me it kind of makes the book drag a little bit because i just want to you know kind of get more into what's going on in the story and i just feel like i'm reading adjective after adjective after adjective so that's just my preference it could be a first novel debut thing or it just could be her writing style but it just kind of at some parts it's just drags for me um but i am liking it there are some twists and little pops of twists that I didn't expect or I didn't see coming which was kind of cool like to have in like a romance story but yes yeah, so I'm on page 218 um, my goal is to get this done today I don't know today's kind of a weird day in school um, they have like we have an hour of training time like in the morning and then classes are only like 35 minutes long so if it, the day goes by pretty quickly um and I have a meeting during lunch when I try to take away like rest my eyes from the computer screen when I read so don't know how much reading I'm actually gonna get but um yeah that's my plan for today I don't really after school I don't really I'll go pick up Grayson and then don't really know it's really cold here today it's like 20 something degrees we had a little bit of snow on the ground last night or this morning so that was kind of nice to wake up to but yeah, I'll check in once I actually have read something more today, but I want to do a check-in since I hadn't really filled you in and kind of give you my feelings about the writing style of this, but I'll check in later. Hi, loves. I look real, real good. Um, and this is kind of a weird angle. I didn't feel like setting up everything because I'm getting ready for bed, so I didn't want to, like, take everything out. So, but I did want to check in before I went to bed tonight because I finished the 12 dates of Christmas. Um, and I'm giving it three stars. Um, I thought it was cute. I like the concept, the ideas of it. Um, however, it is just so wordy. This book could have been chopped down in half. Um, it just was so wordy for me and, um, so many adjectives. And I was looking at Goodreads and some people had some similar feelings and comments about it. So I feel like I'm not alone <laughs> in this. Um, so that was definitely a big drawback for me. Another thing is, it was so predictable. I know a lot of times in romance, it kind of can be, but literally the back cover gives you a hint and then you read maybe the first chapter and you already know who the person is that she's going to fall in love with. And it's just kind of like, you're kind of just waiting till that happens. And it literally does not happen to the last like 15, 20 pages and then it just ends. So like you have this whole buildup of all these 12 dates and then it's like, the ending happens and it's like here and then it goes and it's like the book ends. So I just felt like that was kind of weird. Like I felt like the 12 dates could have definitely been shortened and maybe could have had a little bit more about like who she ends up with. Just my opinion. Um, But it was cute though. And a weird thing I have with it, which I feel like it's probably just me, is that there is a movie on Freeform or with ABC Family when it came out that's called The 12 Dates of Christmas and the main character on that, her name is Kate. The premises are different. The one on TV is more like a deja vu type thing and this is legit 12 dates. But to me, it's just like the name of this book has already been done with like the title of the movie and the main girl's the same exact name. So it's just kind of weird for me. But it was three, I mean, it was cute and I had fun reading it, but it's not a book that I'd probably pick up again and read. So, but it was nice because this did count for quite a few prompts. So it counted for um, a small town because she lives in a small like town, um, very small. Everyone kind of knows everyone, kind of like Stars Hollow. Um, it counted for a character that bakes because she actually bakes for one of the local bake, like the local coffee shop um, in where she lives. It's a debut novel, so I was able to count it as that one. Um, and I think there was one more coffee shop. Oh, she drinks coffee. That was it. She drinks coffee too throughout the book. So I got like four or five prompts out of it on the bingo board. Um, and then on the one through seven prompts for a complicated relationship who she ends up with um at times has been complicated so it definitely counted as that so um because I'm kind of decided this can be kind of a themed vlog as well as the Gilmore Girls I want to continue with like snowy 
wintry Christmas reads. So I'm going to do a reread of a book I read, I don't even know, probably maybe like end of high school. So that's probably like a long time ago. It's Snowed In by Rachel Hawthorne, um, author of The Boyfriend League. Um, I literally don't remember anything about this at all. <laughs> um, so it's definitely probably like a first time read for me again. Um, this will count for a mother-daughter relationship, which is on the bingo board and the seven prompts travel um, because she's traveling from Texas to Lake Michigan, I believe. And I think that's it. It's so close to the 250 page mark. It's like 263. So I'm really bummed, but maybe I can stretch it because it's so close. But um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of go keep going with this winter theme. Definitely not what I originally planned, but I feel like I'm just going to keep going with kind of how I'm feeling. So um, I maybe will read a little bit in this. It won't take me obviously long to read and I'll go to bed. I get ready for work tomorrow. I know this vlog isn't very exciting because I don't really do much besides work and then come home, but I guess it's the life of living in a pandemic. So I'll check in tomorrow. Hey loves, it is Thursday and I figured I would hop on this morning. Just gonna update you things while I straight, straighten my hair at work, which yes, I am straightening it at work um, because I just let my hair air dry in the car and then I don't have kids first block so I just do my hair so please don't judge so yes night I have not read anything else um goal today is to read obviously however that's already started off rough because I left my book at home um like I said I've been trying to read at like lunch just to give myself a little bit of break from being on the computer all the time um so I don't really know what I'm gonna do like I either will just not read today or I'll find an ebook and read that and then read the book that I talked about yesterday, the one that is a reread for me. I'll read that after I finish that because that should be a quick read. It's only like 260 pages and it's a young adult, so won't take long. I am getting my hair done today um, very safely. I don't really go, we don't go out really at all. Um, besides like I only go to work. My husband still works at home right now and he'll be working until April at least they said. Um, so I'm go I am going to do that, but it's, there's like no one else in the shop, just me and my hairdresser who I've known for years. So I'm excited to get that done. And then I definitely will get reading done there um, because I'm getting my hair colored. So I'll have time to sit and read, which will be nice. And then there are reading sprints. Sorry, I'm moving. Um, that for another readathon that I'm doing next month. And we're doing some readathon sprints today um, at 8 o'clock on uh, YouTube. So I have that tonight. So We'll see where today takes me. Hi loves, it's Friday. Um, and I figured I'd finally do an update. It's in the like afternoon, work's almost over with. But um, I didn't really vlog much yesterday because I went and got my hair done after work, like I said. And I ended up being there for over three hours because of my hormones, my hair, when they colored it, like the top came out like blonde. It was so bad. And so they had to like fix it two times to try and make it look somewhat normal. So I went in, it's not what I wanted done, but it's perfectly fine. So, um, but because I was there for so long, I did get a lot of a reading done. So I didn't even tell you what I, started, what I started reading yesterday, but I have a book finished, which is pretty sweet. So I've started reading um, Christmas at Yuletide Farm. Um, it was like a Kindle Unlimited book. Again, kind of went with this whole like Christmas theme like winter that I kind of been going for this vlog for the Gilmore's Girl Readathon. Um it was okay. Um it was short, so it counted for a prompt with 250 pages or less, and it counted for another prompt, and that's what I'm looking for in my notebook. Oh, multiple point of views. It's told from um both of the characters. So it's told from Kate and it's also told from Deacon. Um so it's about this girl, she um Kate <laughs> And she is a reporter and she's known for doing like on the job segments on the news. And she gets um, told that she's going to Yuletide Farm, which is like a Christmas tree farm. Um, and she gets there and her and the owner, um, they end up falling in love or whatever. Um, there wasn't really any like, they literally like kissed like just a couple times and it wasn't until towards the end of the book and at like one point he even asked like if he could hold her hand which I get like is cute because he's like this gentleman that wears this cowboy hat and works um on this farm um up in like northern California but I just was like 
I'm like, come on now, like, let's, let's get a little more. So, I wish it was a little bit more in, like, that romance type of, um, ness kind of in this book. Um, but it was a quick read. I read it in, like, 24 hours. So, and it was cute. It was nothing spectacular. I wouldn't necessarily, like, read it again. Um, so I'm probably going to give it, like, two and a half, three stars. Um, I don't really know yet because I literally just finished it. But it was fine. It was cute. It was, but it was nothing, like really to it I guess that kind of means and it was kind of anti-climatic if that makes sense so but it was cute so that is three books down and I can finally say I feel like I'm officially over my reading rut that I was in which is kind of feeling good so I think I am gonna now pick up that other book that I originally was gonna do before I forgot it at home not brought it to work one day um it's a young adult it's to like a wintry snowy book but I can't believe that the readathon is coming to an end which is coming kind of sad um so yeah so I don't We'll see, but I'm excited to see what I'll pick up next, and I'll let all of you know. Hi, loves. It's Saturday morning, as clearly I just rolled out of bed. I look like a hot mess, but I want to check in before we go to my parents' house. So last night, I made myself just keep reading, if it's upside down, to get this done. So again, this was Snowed In by Rachel Hawthorne. This was a reread for me. It was a book that I loved when I was probably like, 18, 19, 20, maybe even 17. I don't remember exactly. Um, to the point where it's now has traveled with me in all my moves after college. Um, and I hadn't gotten rid of it or put it in storage. Um, so it's one of those books where it's like, I don't know why I liked it so much. <laughs> um, it was kind of shallow. I don't like how much this girl is obsessed over boys and her, like, that's all she talks about when she moves is like, well, I, you know, I'm known for just the dating, the boys, not dating. And we're on a small island. Is there going to be any boys for me to date? And blah, blah, blah. And, or to go on dates. So just that, that to me was kind of annoying. Um, the only thing I found was kind of neat was obviously Lorelai builds the dragonfly in um, as a single mother. And our main character is Ashley's mother. Um, when she moves to this island, she builds a bed and breakfast, which we know the dragonfly not, is not. But she's still building it or like creating one as a single mother after two years being divorced. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it's definitely a love triangle in here. I mean like a love square. I'm not a big fan about reading about these young girls cheating on or making out with guys that like already have girlfriends and like knowingly know it. And same with the guys. And then the guy is still flirting with her even though he has a girlfriend. Like... And they literally had just met each other and the other ones were together for like five years. And then like, I don't know, like they just break up and they're automatically like together. It just was so unrealistic. So I don't know why I liked it so much. Maybe I'm just jaded now as a 28 year old, not a, you know, 20 year old, 18, 17, whatever, reading it. Um, I mean, this book is old. It's from like Borders, which is an old book. So I like does not even, I don't even know last time there was a Borders around here. Um, so I gave it two stars. <laughs> I just wanted to get through it. But this did count, again, like for a mother-daughter relationship prompt. It also came from, um, I believe I was able to count it as one more. It's definitely a mother-daughter relationship. Oh, and a love triangle or a complicated relationship, which was on the seven prompt questions. So I'm happy just to have this done. So, all right, I'll check in later. Hi, loves. So I kind of fell off. <laughs> vlogging over the weekend um I just was kind of like in a weird mood and just didn't really want that to translate into my videos so I kind of laid low after I did my that one check-in on Saturday um but I will fill you in kind of what I've been reading during kind of this wrap-up so Go More Readathon is officially over it ended yesterday and I'm super sad I had so much fun doing this readathon um it just it was awesome and I really hope that I get to participate in um, this readathon again next year. I believe this was the second year they have done it. So I have read a total of completed four books and I started a fifth, which I will get to. And I definitely got a bingo, which is awesome. And I filled up majority of the bingo spots on the bingo card, which is, I'm really, really proud of myself. So quick recap. The first book I read was In a Holidays. I gave this book five stars. Absolutely love this book. I started off really good with this readathon. 
Um, definitely would recommend this book, especially coming into the holiday month. Um, and I did like it again, like I said before, even if you didn't don't like the trope of like you're repeating your days, I would still give this a shot because I think there's much more to the book than just that. So definitely was a five star read. Then I read The Twelve Dates of Christmas and I gave that three stars. Um, it was a book I, I liked the concept but did not like the writing style um, and that really kind of distracted me from like the story and I think um, it could have been a lot more than what it was. Then I went to Christmas at Yuletide Farm and that was an ebook that I read. I gave that one two and a half stars. It was cute. It was wholesome, but there wasn't much to it for me. And I like a little bit more um, depth in a story and just kind of didn't hit that mark for me. And then I read Snowed In, which was a reread for me from when I was like a teenager, early, maybe even 20. I don't really remember. I gave that two stars. Um, I was kind of bummed that I um, kind of wasted my time reading it. Um, but it was kind of funny to see something that I really liked when I was younger and then comparing it to how I feel about it now. And I hated it. So it was kind of interesting. Um, and then I spent the weekend reading Mistletoe and Mr. Right by Sarah Morgan Thaler. I think that's how it's called. Um, she, this is her second book. It is a series of like three, but they, you don't have to read them in order. They just take place at the same spot. Um, in Alaska and so I didn't realize that and so I picked up the second one but I'm actually reading the first one for a readathon I'm participating in December so it's kind of cool and the third one's not out yet it comes out next year so it'll be kind of cool maybe I'll have them all read before the next one comes out so this is a story of our two main characters we have Alana who comes from a lot of money and she's pretty much bought up this small town in Alaska and she's like making it into like condominiums um, and the town really is not happy with us and so she's kind of outed um, and not very well liked. Um, she has a few good friends there. Her, her One of her best friends moved there after she met a man there. And then there's also this guy named Rick and he um, kind of, you know, likes her and she kind of likes him but so far it resolves around that there's this moose and they call it the santa moose and it like destroys like people's decorations or whatever and they have never been able to catch it so she volunteers at a town hall meeting which was kind of cool like connecting to gilmore girls that she will capture this to try and win you know the people back in the town um and that's really how far i've gotten i it's a it's a cute story the only thing i have is i don't mind reading multiple point of view stories which i know some people don't like um however it switches back and forth throughout each chapter so like instead of just sticking with one person's point of view you have a really long chapter with multiple and it switches back and forth between rick and um lana so i just wish that it was maybe shorter chapters just focusing on one point of view versus switching them back and forth my biggest complaint is that it is a long book it's like almost 400 pages so it is a hefty book so I was reading this for the prompt of coming from a wealthy family which Lana does I just like didn't finish it I'm on page 90 and like I said kind of a weird we mood weekend um so I just didn't get as much reading done as I really wanted to but at least I did start this book so I started off the week at a really great five stars and then I went down all the way down to two stars so um but it was fun I liked reading all these Christmas holiday winter themed books and yeah so I've hoped you've enjoyed this vlog if you participated leave a link if you did a vlog or just let me know how your readathon went if you've even read any of these books and you didn't participate let me know what you thought of them and so yeah so if you want to take this journey with me please press that subscribe button if you liked this video give me a thumbs up and if you never want to miss any of my content press that notification button if you want to be friends on any of my other social media platforms all that information is in the um, description box below and yes yeah, so Stay kind, loves, and I'll see you next time. Bye!